Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome back to my channel. And for those of you that are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Angie and I am a first time mum to a little girl, Bella. And I create videos that are all things parenthood, motherhood, and lifestyle videos for you guys to watch at home. So while I was pregnant with my little girl, I watched so many videos on what to pack for your hospital bag. I was so excited to do it when I got around to doing it, but I also kept putting it off because I knew that once I had my hospital bag packed, that was kind of it. It was really the countdown to when Bub was going to be here. I had the list and everything drawn up kind of early on actually, I reckon by the third trimester, and I didn't pack my bag until 39 weeks. I kind of struggled a little bit with what I should pack in my bag. I watched so many YouTube videos and did heaps of research on things that I should pack, but a lot of videos that I found were actually more relevant to people living in the US and the UK and not necessarily here in Australia. A lot of their stuff would still cross over, but what the hospitals provide here is different. So I went off what other people had suggested in their videos. I also went off our hospital checklist and then I got another checklist from our local baby store and sort of collated everything together and made my own list for things that I would take to the hospital for my first birth with my little girl. So I broke my list up into five categories. So I had everything for bub in this bag this is the nappy bag that we got initially we don't use this one anymore but it was a good one to take to hospital so it's a backpack and then everything for myself and Matt was in this bag here. So it's a pretty good size. It's like a duffel bag. I was going to take a small suitcase, but when we did our hospital tour, they suggested not taking suitcases. So this was my next option. And then I also had a recyclable bag that had all things like food, drinks, stuff like that to keep us going. So I'm gonna show you everything that I packed and things I didn't use, why I didn't use them, and what I wish I'd packed. And honestly, now, no what I know and since having it Bella I would have taken a lot less stuff I thought I was gonna be in all these different clothes I thought we'd get a few photos some of the stuff that I'd packed for myself and for Bella we didn't use at all some of the stuff I'd prepped for the labor didn't happen I look at it now and I think what were you thinking like like oh anyway so at our hospital they did have trolleys as well that we could put stuff on so this was really easy so let me show you what I took this is pretty much everything except for obviously the food and that that we took to the hospital. Looking at it, I can't believe it actually covers our bed and certainly we did not use it all. So much stuff. So guys, this is everything that I took to the hospital for myself. So I took a nursing t-shirt and two nursing singlets. So they've got the clips here that I can feed Bub with. I took a flannel just to leave the hospital in because I had Bella in October. So here in Brisbane, it's still spring, but it was still kind of coolish. I took some trackies, just some really loose ones. These are the ones that I wanted to sort of wear while I was in hospital after having Bella, but I was wearing them during my labor. And these are the ones that got kind of ruined when my waters broke so if you haven't seen my birth story I'll leave a link up the top here I took some leggings just to leave hospital in some jeans just in case a lot of videos that I watched had people taking their own dressing gowns I took this with me that I already had I took a long sleeve nighty that had buttons just so I could feed Bella so I took bikinis just in case I took bed socks really warm ones and then just ankle socks to leave the hospital in heaps of undies once you've had the baby you need to have really high undies to sort of tuck everything in and it should be up to your belly button in case you have to have a c-section or if you've elected to have a c-section so that the scar doesn't get irritated so I had full granny panties these ones these ones these ones and then just normal pregnancy undies then a couple of bras just nursing ones then I also took just some shoes to leave the hospital in and some thong just to walk around the hospital and if I needed to. I also bought some bed pants for the purpose to have in hospital and I also bought this massive warm dressing gown as well for the purpose of taking it to hospital mainly because I'd watched other people's hospital bag videos and they'd taken stuff like this I shouldn't have bought it it was a waste of money I didn't take either this is literally everything that I should have taken. So I've got my shoes, which I wore home from hospital, my thongs, which I wore around the ward, my trackies, which I wore, leggings I wore home with my flannel, and then bed socks I wore because it was quite cold in the ward. 
these socks I wore home. My bikinis I didn't wear, but I would still take them with me purely because I did want to wear them at some point. I just didn't because of the way that my labor and birth went with Bella. My bras, obviously, I did wear and undies I did wear, but everything else that I had out, I just didn't wear. So that's everything that I took for myself for the hospital and everything that I wouldn't take knowing what I know now. I would obviously take a lot less stuff than what I did take. When I went into hospital with Bella, I was just wearing my trackies, which you saw, and like a pregnancy nursing shirt and my white shoes. So I didn't have to pack them in the bag or anything. I labored in that. Then it wasn't until I went down to the birth suite and they put the hospital gown on me because I was getting an epidural. That is when I really got out of my clothes. I feel like at some point they must have changed it. Like maybe after they'd stitched me up or something because I would have had blood all over it. I'm not really sure, but I definitely had another hospital gown at some point and I stayed in that until I had to leave hospital. And then I just put my leggings on to obviously support my core and my flannel and that was it. So with my partner Matt's stuff, I wouldn't actually change it. Everything I packed for him, he used or we had intention to use. So I would definitely take everything again that I did take for him. I had trackies for him which he wore at night. Board shorts he didn't use, but we had intentions to use them if I was laboring in the birth suite and going into the bath or if I was gonna have a water birth, I wanted him to sort of be part of that. So I definitely would take them again just in case that route happened with the next baby. A couple of pairs of undies and socks, which obviously he used. A couple of shirts. We chose some shirts for him that he could get photos with Bub. I had that in mind when packing. I don't even think that he wore the one in the end. We just didn't think about that sort of stuff after the baby came. Woody, because it was really cold in the hospital, we went through the public system. We were really lucky. We got a private room with an ensuite and Matt had a little day bed and someone came along and gave him sheets and everything, but he wasn't warm or anything like that. I feel like we may have actually put our pillows in the car just in case we were going to be there for longer than we thought if something had happened to Bella or anything like that, just for safekeeping, but we never got them. So guys, I'm sure this is the part you're actually waiting for. This is what I took for Bub. Most of this is actually not to scale in terms of like I've got packaged clothes that are what she's in now because I've packed away all of her newborn stuff and newborn nappies. Obviously newborn nappies are a lot smaller, but you get the general gist. We didn't know what we were having, but I had a feeling the entire pregnancy that I was having a girl. So I bought this online while I was pregnant, just secondhand. And my idea was that she could use it or he could use it. So it's a little grow bag with the headpiece. I took it to hospital with the intent of Bub using the grow bag and us getting pretty photos of the baby. Didn't happen. Nappy bags we did use, nappies we used. I bought a pack just from Aldi and I took the entire pack with me, but this is just here to sort of give you a representation. These antibacterial wipes I did take. Same with, I took a bag of wipes, wraps for her. So these are stretchy ones, I really like these ones. So I had everything labeled, so like size four zeros and singlets. I had size five zeros, three zero outfits, some beanies, some socks. Obviously I took the sizes that actually were those sizes. These are all double O because that's what Bella's in now, but just to give you an idea. And then I took this really warm blanket and just left this in the car seat so that she could have that on the way home. And then I also had hand sanitizer. So with everything that I took for Bella, I used only a teeny bit of it, not even a teeny bit. I used, I did use it. So I took five zero out Outfits. I only had two. I took two four zero outfits and I took three or four three zero outfits and I took a heap of like newborn singlets, a bit of inside. So we didn't buy any like five zeros or anything. We got gifted two five zero onesies, just short sleeve ones. But when Bella came out, we were like, oh. So I had to ring mum and say, look, can you please go to the shops and get some five zeros because she is teeny and like she was still normal size. Five zeros were still swimming on Bella and she was in five zeros for nearly six weeks I reckon so we had to get a lot more of them but yeah so I wouldn't take three zeros I would take a couple of four zeros just in case I had a bigger bub next time but definitely five zeros four zeros the muslin wraps we didn't actually use. They wrapped her up in a hospital blanket, so we didn't use them. I would still take one just in case. We did use the nappies and we used our own wipes. I think they did give us one or two nappies and a couple of wipes anyway, but we used our own for the rest of it. And we did use Huggies wipes. I just don't have any on me. I've only got that brand. With baby's first poos, they are like hard. It's really hard to get off their bum. So I did a lot of research on what wipes to use and a lot of people said Huggies. So we got Huggies and they worked really well for us. We still use them. 
them. It's just that I've got a whole heap of these that I was given the grow bag to get the photo in. Wouldn't take it again because I just didn't have the energy to do all the photo things that everyone does when they're in hospital. And I really wanted to. I had full intention of doing that. We just didn't do it. If I were to have an epidural again for the next baby, I wouldn't be able to leave the bed anyway until we left the hospital. And it's kind of like you just want to go home. I didn't really have time to sort of get her changed and do all this stuff. It just didn't happen. I don't think I'd do it again just because of the effort that is involved and knowing what post labor is like. <laughs> the beanies we definitely used. I would take a couple of beanies and the socks. I think we did use but they were massive on her so going forward for the next kid I would just get the onesies like the long sleeved and leg onesies that have the mittens for the hands and the feet that's what I would do for the next child I got sandwich size bags and snack size Ziploc bags and I just labeled everything so I had size 40 and singlets and then I had beanies in this I had washed all of her stuff previously and I didn't want to have to rewash everything from hospital if she didn't use it so I just bagged everything in that way as well. If I couldn't leave the hospital bed Matt was able to easily find what was what and the sizes were all there so that was my plan in that and I really liked that it really worked for us so I would definitely do that again for her stuff. Well, she's already here for the next kid's stuff. <laughs> so everything that I took toiletries wise fit into here. I wanted it all to be compact. Some of it was for us to use, uh, some of it was for me to use during labor, but the rest of it was just to use while we were in hospital because we didn't know how long we were gonna be in hospital. I took things like my moisturizer, face wash, broke our deodorants. I ended up changing my normal deodorant to a roll-on that was pH balanced and everything for breastfeeding bub. So I did a bit of research and I went with QV. Both our toothbrushes, just some travel toothpaste, I took some travel shampoo and conditioner and body wash and then I had just like some bobby pins and hair ties and some wipes and ear the images cotton tips we don't really use a lot of stuff I'm not a big makeup person so I didn't take any makeup or photos or anything like that or to leave the hospital during the labor a few people said to take things that sort of help aid you with the pain and that you know a lot of people had said that they get dry lips and dry hands and everything while they're in labor so I did take my my hand and nail cream I didn't actually use this so I wouldn't take it again lip balm I did use a lot I used it a lot anyway deep heat I didn't realize it was controversial but I think it is a bit controversial in terms of whether or not you use it during your pregnancy some people think that I think it's the smell can make you sick or I don't know that some people think that there may be like it affects the baby or something I didn't read too much into both sides I spoke to my physio about it and one physio said don't use it another one said it should be okay so I went with it because I found this was really the only thing that helped me even during my pregnancy just with my back pain I did use things like heat packs I have a higher back condition and for me my lower back was a real issue during my pregnancy so using deep heat was sort of not an issue once I got to a certain point in my pregnancy I just needed to use something that was going to be somewhat pain relieving for me I don't think I used this during my labor I may have used it like once I would take it with me again just in case it helped like if I needed to use it but I don't remember using it magnesium oil I definitely used in my labor and throughout my pregnancy. I used it on my lower back just for pain relief and towards the end of my pregnancy I started using it on just the lower part of my tummy and it really helped. So I would take that again and then you know the favorite things this was for post birth so these are regular I had like the super super ones and I had like two or three packs of them so I took these I also have I never use these because I still have them but I bought the depends so they are pad undies I guess is the best way to describe it I had every intention of actually using these but I just never did I just got given pads after bub was born and I just stuck to it because I had so many of them I would buy both again just to see which option I liked at the time but yeah that is what we took for toiletries so guys this is kind of the last section that I'll show you because the section after is food and I don't have any of the food and that I took because it's being consumed this is sort of like the miscellaneous stuff and some stuff that we would use throughout the labor and possibly the delivery so in terms of all of the miscellaneous stuff that we kind of took I pretty much used not much of it actually I was gonna say a lot I didn't I didn't really use much of it at all so I used things like 
like my water bottle. I think we used our headphones. I didn't use the Hydrolite, but I'm glad I took it with me just because they didn't know how I would sort of be. Vomit bags, I didn't use ours, but the hospital gave me some. These are called C-Bands. I got these just at the chemist. They are more so for motion sickness, but they're also used for nausea and that while you're pregnant. I don't know if they work work or if it's a placebo effect, but I certainly wore these throughout the pregnancy and early stages of my labor. Gum, obviously, we used, didn't use the camera, we just used our phones. We didn't use a speaker, we actually didn't listen to any music that I had prepared for the labor, which was kind of a bit of a bummer, but also the way things happened, we just didn't, I don't know, we just didn't do it, we didn't get around to it. If you watch my birth story, you'd seen we were in the ward for a while, so we could have potentially listened to it there, we just didn't. And when we were down in the birth suite, everything sort of happened really quickly, and it didn't really even cross my mind to ask for the music to go on. The notebook and pen I didn't use, but I'm glad I took a pen because I had to fill forms out. Blue book, obviously we had to have, it has our ID number and everything in. The books, I think Matt read one of his books. I did not read anything and yeah, that's all with that stuff. So you guys, I've gotten rid of some stuff that I didn't use and it's reduced quite significantly, but this is probably what I would take for the next bub. In terms of food, obviously I can't show you that now, but our food supplies were kind of minimal. We had like just nuts, dried fruit, that sort of stuff. I took things that were going to last. So I took Powerade. It just boosts your electrolytes. I think I had a couple of sips and I vomited it back up. Matt had his though. I got some lollies and some chocolate just for some sugar if I needed to pick me up. I know a lot of people said to take protein bars and stuff like that. I think I bought one protein bar and took it. Protein bars are not something that I generally consume, so I didn't want to go out and buy them if I wasn't going to like them. If that makes sense. Our hospital did have a canteen and there was also a little kitchenette in the birth suite area where partners could go and make like some toast and that. They had those facilities there so for us certainly we didn't need to go too full on with the food. While I was in labor too I didn't really feel like eating. I think I ate one proper sized meal the entire time I was in labor. Anything that I had I couldn't really keep down so I didn't really feel like eating. I also on my list of things to take had another list broken off of things to do before we left the house. So things like just turning the powerpoints off I'm really anal with that sort of stuff locking the door making the bed taking the bins out just little things like that so that when we came home with bub there wasn't anything that we needed to rush and go and do the other thing that we did take was a cooler bag just a small one with ice bricks in it because I did choose to keep my placenta to get it encapsulated I was really into the whole idea of it but I can do another video on that later if you guys want just let me know in the comments down below but yeah so that is something else we took so we had our bag bub's bag Bag, food bag and their skis. We kind of had a few more actually than I thought, but that's what we took. So guys, obviously things are a little bit different at the moment with COVID going on. So every hospital I think has made their own restrictions on what you can take and what you can do. So definitely check with your hospital what you can and can't take in. Next time I will be packing a completely different bag. I just took way too much stuff that I didn't use and I was happy to be in the hospital gown. It didn't bother me at all. So guys, I really hope this helps you in packing your own hospital bags. If you have any requests for videos, please leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video and want to see more like this, please give it a thumbs up as it really supports my channel. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as I post new videos every week. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Ooh, it's some yucky. Um, 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 what do you call these things? Um, hi, hi, hi. throw, jumper. What is the word I'm looking for? Hmm, does that even make sense? I don't know. I can't think of anything else. Oh boy.